All right, how's it going guys? Today we're gonna be drawing Roy G. Biv parrots and we're gonna be coloring them a certain way. Coming up. All right, so welcome back to another video. I'm Mr. Mill from The Drawing Mill, AKA the teacher from Homestead Elementary. And today we're gonna be drawing a Roy G. Biv parrot. And what that means basically is a parrot that's in the order of the rainbow or basically the order of colors that it should be. So I have two examples here. Uh, they are from older kids that have graduated and they have no names in the back, so I kept them. And uh, we have two variations here. As you can see, uh, it's more than just the rainbow. So if they finish early when it comes to the rainbow, uh, basically the rainbow starts over again. So if you don't know what the rainbow is, it's Roy G. Biv. So R-O-Y-G-B-I-V. Uh, for this activity, we're gonna minus indigo. So let's take out the V and keep it simple. So Roy G. Biv without the V. Now, well that's, oh sorry, without the I. <laughs> Uh, so with that said, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw the parrot, and then hopefully you guys have some colors. You can use markers, paints, anything you want. I'm going to be using crayon, and then we'll go from there, and hopefully we can make something really cool. So let's get going. So let me just put these to the side. If I only put these over, let me just put them out of view. I don't want it to become a distraction. Let's put it right here. Alright, so for our parrot, you want to make sure your paper is vertical, and then if you want, I highly suggest you do this in pencil just in case you make a mistake like how I might. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a teardrop oval in the middle of my page but making sure I have enough room for where the head's going to go. So I'm going to draw it just like this. And notice how I'm doing it in pencil too because I don't want to mess up either. And then once I do that, I want to make sure I put the beak in the right spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my marker because I'm confident enough that this part won't get messed up. I'm going to draw an arrow going this direction. That's going to be the back of the beak. And then I'm going to do a slight curve up and then down. There we go. So now we have an arrow pointing this way. And then I'm just going to connect this line to here, just like this. And the bottom part of the jaw, I'm just going to go halfway, right about there. Beak is done. If you want to add a little nostril, you can. And all we got to do to finish it off is connect it to the body, just like this. If you want to loop back around and create a little bit more of a frill in the back, you can, just like that. Now, for the body itself, I'm going to create a, kind of like a wave over here like this. And then using this teardrop or oval type of shape down here, I'm going to keep going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pencil as a guide. And I'm going to draw a couple lines. You need at least six, but we'll see. So I'll stop right there. So what I'm going to do I'm going to keep going down, waving my lines, just like that, and making sure I cover my straight lines there. And that way, I have ways to divide my Roy G. Biff colors. For the last one, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because it's the tail. Go like this. There we go. Now, for the head part, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop from this part of the beak all the way around all the way and connect it right there like that and you can do any eye you want if you know how to do, draw a cute eye you can do that I'm just gonna draw a simple eye right over here I'm gonna make it sure it's looking maybe this direction just like that Ta -da! there we go all right we got the gist of my parrot I don't want to draw any uh, feet yet because I want to make sure I have the branch first so what I'm gonna do is you can make it tilting this way this way or going straight I'm going to make my branch tilting maybe this way, because I'm used to that. So I'm going to make my branch going behind the body, just like this. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit thick, so I'm going to create another line, just like that. Now I have where the branch is, I can take my pencil and try to figure out where I want that uh, claw hanging. So I'm going to take my marker, because I'm pretty confident of where I know where to put it. I'm going to put mine right there. Now what I could do is I can go back and try to add some leaves here and there. Now we'll add some leaves right here. These right there, maybe I'll add some right here. And then I can complete my branch. And if you want, I've seen kids kind of like stem out. Maybe they want to make their branch kind of like coming apart like this. That's fine too. All right, now we got the branch and we got the parrot sitting on it. All we're gonna do now is 
designing the background. So all I'm going to do is try to come up with a couple ideas here and there, and we'll go from there. So maybe I want to add some grass. So if you want to do some pencil again, if you don't want to mess up, go ahead. Maybe grass over here, like a little really tall, long jungly grass. Maybe I'll put some on the side as well, just like this. And then on the top to frame the picture, maybe I'll put some giant leaves, like that. Maybe I'll put another giant leaf right here. All right. Maybe uh, a branch with a leaf or two, like that. Maybe another branch. And then with that said, maybe I can add some background stuff. You can add a volcano if you want. You can add a sunset. For my case, I might add some clouds here and there. Add a cloud behind the parrot itself. Maybe some more clouds. Maybe a cloud right here. And then kind of the sun right there. All right, so I'm almost done. I don't think I want to add any more, but if I want to, I can later, but I don't want to waste time. So before I color, the best thing I would do is clean up your picture a little bit by using an eraser. I'm going to use a kneaded eraser because the reason why I like a kneaded eraser instead of, uh, oh, here it is, instead of a back of a pencil or this kind of eraser is that it doesn't leave a lot of residue. So if I erase with this, there's a lot of like residue marks. So I like to use a kneaded eraser, you can get, find them in an art store or you can find them like at a craft store. Kneaded erasers are nice because it doesn't leave any dirt or debris behind. So I'm going to erase all my mistakes and all my sketching lines, so maybe my lines from when I was doing the colors break down over here, maybe some of the leaves I was doing and this curve up here. Because if you don't erase it and you color first, it'll stay underneath that uh, color because you're basically layering on top of the paper. Think about making a cake and like you kind of like put stuff on top of each other. It's hard to get that bottom layer out if there's something on top. Same thing with drawing, so be careful. All right, so I don't need this marker. Don't need this pencil anymore. But what I do need is color. So here I go. Here's my color. I think I'm gonna do something a little bit different this time. I think I'm gonna go with marker instead. I was doing coloring with crayon all day, so. Here we go. I'll tell you what, I'll do the parrot and marker, and I'll do everything else in uh, right now. So here we go. Start off with the parrot. Uh, the parrot's head normally is red. So instead of coloring it in solidly, I'm just gonna try to sketch in my marker lines like this, making sure it's nice and straight. I'm making sure I'm not too sloppy. And if we were in school, we'd probably do paint normally. Uh, maybe I'll do the beak yellow. Normally the beak is white, but for this picture purposes, I want to make sure it has a little bit of a shine to it. There we go. All right, so when it comes to Roy G. Biv, what's the next color after red? It's yellow. So we have the yellow out already, which is not that one right there. I would have been bad. <laughs> Sorry, the next color. All right, so with that said, the next color is orange. So let me get my orange. I'll go from there. So red, orange, right here. And then after orange, is yellow. So here I go. Red, orange, yellow. And if you're ever having trouble remembering how this works, if you have a handy dandy color wheel like how I do, you're kind of just going in a certain order. So here is my color wheel. If we just match it with my parrot, we can kind of see which the next color is. So if we start over here with red, the next color was orange, the next color is yellow. You can already tell what the next color is, which is green. Let's do green next. After green, then it's blue. And after blue, the next color is violet. Ta-da! And there we go, we're all done. Now, with the parrot at least. Parrot's all done. If you have more layers than what I have, just like how the other kids did, if I still have it, you can keep going. So they ended at purple, but they kept going. They just started over again. Same with this student. They just started over. So if you have more lines, you can go ahead and start over. 
Okay, so there's that. Parrot's all done. If I want to add a little bit more color to the feet, I can do that right here. And I left this part white in particular for a reason because that's how normally parrots are. And to make it more realistic, maybe we'll add some dots here like that. Ta-da! All done. Now let's put my markers away and I want to make sure my background's done. I want to do my background in crayon instead though. That way it makes it look like my parrot's really vibrant and standing out. So let me clean up my mess like how you guys should always. And no one else will put your stuff away. So you might as well do it. All right, so let's start off with the branches I see everywhere. Maybe I'll do brown here. I try to balance the branches everywhere as I could. There we go. Brown here. And if you have a color box like how I have over here, um, you might as well use like the browns that you got. So I'm gonna try to find some more browns here I got. Here we go. Yeah, that gives it a more cool effect there. I like that. That's nice, okay. Maybe I have kind of like an orange, orangish brown. Let's give it more of a effect. Oh wow, that's really jungly color. I'm gonna put that on the top to symbolize sun beaming down on the branches. That'd be kind of cool. Ooh, that looks really cool. All right, next up is the grass. Let's make the grass a little bit more vibrant with a light green. And then there's some grass over here. Let's put the big leaves a dark green or kind of like a jungle green. Let's try this one. I have a lot of greens in that container. So we might as well use, at least use half of them. Let's see, I see another really dark green over here. Let's do it for this one right here. Try to use as many different greens as you can. I almost forgot this one right here. And I really like this green, it looks pretty. And if you really want to be fancy, you can take like a light, light green, like this, and then kind of go on top of each leaf. And then it'll give the leaf a little bit more of a shine to it, just like that. There we go. All right, there's only one more thing. And it's not the clouds. You guys should know that clouds are not blue, they're white. So instead, I'm gonna do the sky. So if you wanna do like a sunset, like how I showed you before, you can. I'm gonna make sure my sky is a little bit lighter and kinda like this color, kinda like a slate blue. I like to call it slate blue because it's very not so saturated. Not so saturated means not so vibrant or bright. And uh, I'm about to call this done right about not now <laughs> all right there you go that's what i call done all right well i hope you guys enjoy this roy jibiv parrot project it helps you remember with the order of the rainbow and uh i'm gonna call it done so hope you guys enjoy this video and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye